Well, folks, uh, we got stationed up. We're doing our trick again because it's uh, that tide is, is ripping pretty good. All right, what Chad's doing is he just took some of the pre-tropical fish food. He's going to mix it up with salt water, just enough salt water to make almost like a paste. And then he's going to start dumping it right behind that piling right there. And hopefully we can get these, these bait fish chummed up. There's bait down here. So there's quite a bit of bait. We wanted to try to go offshore, but the winds are supposed to pick up pretty good today. So I don't know what we're going to do. The tide's ripping right now, so we're probably going to have to start inshore. But the winds are supposed to pick up by about 11 o'clock. So I'm not quite sure what we're going to do at this point. But we're fishing. I talk about when we uh, when we're out there grouper and snapper fishing and stuff and I'm, I always say chumming is the key well it's the same when it comes to the bait fish this water temperature is at 60 degrees so it's pretty cold and they were stuck to the bottom but as you can see they're off the bottom now and we're catching bait so when you're mixing the chum, you want to make sure you have the right consistency of water to chum. And the one way I usually do that is to go ahead and just taste it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about right. <laughs> That's just not right at all. Yeah, slimy fingers. <laughs> We were able to get bait as you saw again like i said that tide is ripping so we we got behind the pilings and we we're able to chum that bait up pretty quick using that talon cast net 1.3 pounds per foot 10 and a quarter and you saw it did the job so uh now it's trying to determine what we're going to do and i think we're probably going to fish inshore first simply because that tide is just moving so so fast and so hard so i think that's what we're gonna do chad got schmutch all over the camera Look it up. what we're doing is that water temperature is still pretty cold so we we uh stopped uh in the port manatee channel and um last time we were here i was marking a bunch of fish in the middle and i i told chad i said i guarantee i know what they are and um they're silver trout and if you want to take your family out to go and catch a lot of fish and good eating fish uh silver trout is the is the way to go any deep water during this time of year they'll they they, they get together 
and they school up in masses. And usually, typically, what the best thing to do is is use a jig head with uh, shrimp. I'm using a jig head with a jig. Chad was fortunate enough to bring some dead shrimp, so um, he's caught two. I haven't caught nothing. But the one I caught was on a jig. Oh, the one, yeah, the bigger one you caught on was on a jig. But if you always, if you want to come out here and catch a lot of fish, especially if you've got kids, this is a fun thing to do because it's it's almost stupid fishing when you have live or when you have shrimp. They're they're on it pretty pretty quick. I mean, I can feel them hitting the jig. I just gotta get a hook into them. Or I may have to go to shrimp because there's a pile of them down there right now. And that, my friends, is a silver trout. Well, that was fun, but it's just not our style. We caught a few. We we, we 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 did what we wanted to do, but now it's time to go do something different. We're going to go up to the flats and see if we can't find some mullet and uh, go from there. The wind's starting to pick up, so luckily it's out of the south out of the south right now so it's it's not going to be too too bad Pick them, I just catch them. I'm like a trout. It's better than nothing. Yep, fights more than that little sugar trout. <laughs> yeah. Using live bait, especially in the winter time, is this is this is a circumstance that happens but you want to try to get that line off that bird even though they're a pain all right so what we've done is we've changed positions um, we we were catching snook but the lady fish moved in so as I've said before I always I really like negative low tides and the reason why is because it really will start to concentrate the fish like this little cove right here is literally maybe this deep maybe a little deeper than that so what happens is these fish come out of these mangroves and they come into these holes and this this little point right here has this hole that drops down to about four feet well these fish come out of that they come out of those mangroves and they drop into these holes and they become like shooting fish in a barrel so hopefully fingers crossed that the fish are in here and chad's cast will produce a fish i'm hoping that it shouldn't take long but what's happening is the tide is moving out this way. So it's going around this around this point. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll free line our bait kind of past that point a little bit, but they usually will stack up in this hole. I've actually sat here and caught almost a hundred fish before with some clients. They almost missed their flight. We were catching so many. They were like, I'm like, you guys need to go. And they're like, yeah, we, we, we're catching fish. We don't want to. Uh oh. Somebody got stuck. Like you ran out of water. Yep. All this water. Yeah. Why do you want to drive on land? And that's the thing. You want to make sure that you kind of know where you're going to. It's like Chad and I were coming around this bend, and I literally had the motor trimmed up as far as it would go, and and uh, I was throwing a rooster tail, and I was still kicking up mud. So, you, but I knew where I was. I knew where I was going. So I w I knew I was okay. But I I knew, like right now, we couldn't go back out that same way because of the tide being even lower and lower than what it was when we came through there so you always want to kind of if you want to learn a new area fishing a negative uh tide like that is probably one of the best things to do simply because it exposes a lot of the sandbars and things like that so if you take it slow you can find some really good areas chad you were supposed to catch a fish already come on already beat us to it. you think i don't know now really well um chad wants to give it one more minute i'm like let's go because we haven't seen a chummer get busted we haven't seen a, nothing nothing so sometimes you come to a spot and you think oh yeah it's going to be on and then nothing 
And I usually have a pretty good gut feeling. If we if we don't see anything, oh wait, what? Ooh, was that your bait on top? Yeah. I could be wrong. Chad wanted to wait just a little bit longer, and what happens? He catches a fish. Fish on. It's not a big one. Trout. Is it? What it looks like. No, maybe it is a trout. That's a decent trout. Yeah, it is a trout. Look at Chad. Oh, I'm close Ooh, to my, hoo, hoo, hoo. Getting close to That's my a decent slam trout. now, two thirds of the way. And sometimes not being patient <laughs> can sometimes hinder you. So. Yeah, that's not usually my forte is being patient. No, it's not. Usually he's right along with me. Let's go, let's go, let's go. But um, we're just we're just messing around today, having a good time, enjoying his day off, and then I took the day off. We were supposed to be at the St. Pete Boat Show, but unfortunately, um, we I ran out of uh, components to build jigs. And I'm even I'm even back ordered on the regular jigs and I'm waiting for those hooks to come in So we've had such a flurry of orders, which we highly appreciate, but we're we're getting we're getting all the stuff in I should have a lot of it in today. So um, If you if if you ordered some regular jigs within the last five days That's why you haven't gotten them yet because we're on back order, but we appreciate all the support um, uh, it's been awesome. I can't I can't say it enough. The cast nets are selling like crazy and as you saw earlier today um, They catch bait. They catch bait. You don't have to spend three hundred dollars on a cast net to go catch bait We just showed you that the talon cast net will catch bait easily Now if we can only catch more fish <laughs> Patience, patience. <laughs> I don't have no stinking patience oh. It is true. That's the water temperature is only like 59 where we're fishing. And so it's it's not warm at all. And um, I told him when we were fishing for those uh, silver trout, I told him we, we might want to wait a little bit simply because these fish aren't going to be really fired up. Well, we've caught some snook and stuff in that one trout, that one decent trout. But other than that, I think it's I think it won't pick up until this afternoon. We have a major feeding time, I think, from 159 to 359, if I remember correctly. He has some other commitments, I he think said. I might go see the shrimp guy, get me some oysters. Well, yeah, we're, I'm doing couch, I'm getting the, that's why I'm getting there late cuz I got to get the oysters and shrimp for tomorrow. It's seafood Saturday at the Fouché house. Well, we're moving again. Chad caught that trout, and then nothing else. And I said, we need to move. But I know we're getting close. What time is it? Almost 11 o'clock. We're getting pretty close to the tide being done. Now Chad just asked me, are we gonna fish this side or the other side? Well, we're gonna fish the other side simply because there's no water on this side, especially up towards the trees. There's a trench that runs through here, and I'll explain it when we set up, that the fish will, will drop down into, just kind of like that area in the back there, but hopefully the fish will be in here, so we're gonna, we're gonna fish it and see. Okay, what we've got here is this, this island, and what happens is this tide's running this way, and this there's a drop off right at the edge of the island, and it gets real skinny to our right, and there's a trench that runs through here, so these fish will stack up right on the edge of the drop, and then we'll catch snook and redfish up here and then we'll catch trout in the middle. So hopefully we'll catch some fish. This is a redfish, I think. Looks like it. Gold. Yep. Oh, the boat's got a slam. How'd you have that one hooked? Belly. Yeah. A little redfish. A little redfish. Trying to get these big snook to eat. I think this is going nuts. I just wish he was going nuts because that big one was swimming towards him. I don't see him now. Trout. Todd got a slam. I'll post start recording. GoPro. Nope, it is. Todd I got, got a, slam. a slam. I got a slam. 
Just like I said, those trout are located a little farther out. It's not the biggest one in the world, but hey, it's a trout. I got a sling. Well, uh, we went out in the middle of the bay and uh, we didn't stay out there. <laughs> it was rough and the bike wasn't there. So we came back in fishing in shore, see what we can do. The tide's coming in now. It's just one of those days. Bounce around a lot, catch a few fish here and there and keep moving. happening is that we're actually sight fishing these fish <laughs> and um, they're coming up to the bait and we're having to reel it in for them to eat it they won't eat it if it's sitting still it has to be we have to be reeling it in it seems and um, but we're watching them come right up and strike it it's pretty cool but what we've got here is a um, We've got a shoreline where the tide is now coming in, so it's coming through this way, and there's a drop off, and it, th these fish are sitting right on that drop. As I said, on these negative low tides, even though the tide's starting to come in, they're still down off this drop a little bit. Actually, they're right out by the close to the close to the boat. That's why we're actually seeing them come up and eat. So um, there's quite a bit of fish in here, and we're catching them. We've seen some big ones. We saw some really big ones earlier today that were 35 to 40 inches, but we just couldn't get them to eat. They were just, they were sitting there and they were moving back and forth ever so slowly. Back there and stuff. I don't know. I mean, I was getting fish swatting and eating. They seemed a little more aggressive back that way. still better than catching nothing so I'm just reeling in like a slow lure Chad just likes to keep feeding the birds oh, keeping oh. them busy away from come on come on see when the bait gets nervous like that I stop it oh Chad missed the double Come on, Chad. But that, this goes to show that everything that I talk about when I say establish a pattern, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is figuring out how these fish want to eat that bait. Even though it is a live bait and it swims by itself, sometimes they don't want it like that. They want it they want it presented differently slowly reeling it in i can't tell you how many times we've we've done that to where they won't eat it any other way except for reeling it in come on yeah, right there boat he's a monster but it's so cool to be able to be able to watch him come right up and eat it I've got to say that the times that we do inshore fish for snook and that, um, I can say that their their uh, population is really, really starting to boom, which is good to see. <laughs> I'm putting on a clinic, Chad. All right, let's see who catches a fish. We literally landed in the same spot. Mm. 
I'm about to catch a blue heron. Get! Oh, you little rascal! <laughs> Even a fat boy gets lucky once in a while. Oh, I'm on, I think. See, I'm going to TampaBayFishingChannel.com and checking what the salooner times are because I didn't do it like an idiot before. So, salooners. Well, after a while, what happens is your leader gets pretty frayed and you want to make sure you change it because if you don't, what happens is you'll hook that big fish and you'll break off immediately. And you'll talk about the one that you missed all day long. So when it's frayed like this, you definitely want to change it out. Don't be lazy like Chad. That's why I've tied like six times. <laughs> and as I said before, all I tie is a perfection loop. And then we're, I'm using our two watt circle hooks from Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. Tag in and we're ready Look to at go. That. Look at this. That much line out. <laughs> well, what are you doing, Chad? Ew. Why'd you feed Come him? on, Chad. Why'd you feed him? <laughs> you wouldn't have ate the hook, I wouldn't have to get it out. He's gonna bite you. That's get him, bird. Get him, bird. <laughs> Happy about it. I'll tell you that. It doesn't taste good, does it? Wouldn't want them dirty pliers in my mouth either. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> no birds were harmed in the filming of this show. I'm not sure about that. He pooped all over the boat. He pooped all over the boat. Stupid bird. See, if I wouldn't have retied my, my leader, I'd have lost that fish. Even though he's not huge, but he's still a good fish. We're just not, well, we're not fighting very hard. Today. I don't know if it's because of the cold. Oh, come on. Wow, that's a good swirl. This is probably the best snook of the day or close to it. I've caught them both. Nick, nick, nick. That ain't over yet. Bird! I got the best bird so far. On you, you're more entertaining. Look at this, folks. He just, he's throwing all the way, I'm he's trying standing to get, up there I'm trying to get away from the bird. And he's casting all the way across the, to, to my spot where I've been to catching. To my the, spot, my so, spot, my spot. Where I've been Nobody catching. owns any spots in this river. Let me, let me go ahead and catch one and show him out. A seagull done. or what? Watch. Oh, you gonna catch on, a man. seagull? Nope. See, look at that. Oh. <laughs> the tot is on fire. That's like 50 to 2. No, it ain't that <laughs> Maybe 30. Not 2. <laughs> You know what they say? Huh? I'm not sure. I just figured I'd ask to see if you know what they say. Not the biggest one in the world, but it's 
still beating Chad. Who's keeping score? I am. Oh. Because <laughs> you know, I, I constantly hear all the time, <laughs> Chad catches a lot of fish. Chad can. I'm like, that's because he's not doing anything except for fishing. He's not filming. He's not talking to the camera. So what do you expect him to do? He had a, a guy that's been professionally guiding for six years, fished this area for 30 plus years, putting him on the fish. Of course he's going to catch fish. I don't want to take your hat off. Why? Because your head's swollen right now. <laughs> Might cut the circulation off. Come on. Chad, what do, what do you what There's do you nothing have? interesting to see on this side. <laughs> Come on, Chad. This keeps getting closer and Who? closer. You. Me? We moved. You're still standing in the chicken No, I'm talking pool. about where you cast it. This is just embarrassing for Chad. Look at that. Oh, God. TV drag. <laughs> That's how you do it right there. Sitting here fishing. <laughs> Oh, Lord. GoPro, put a fish on the end of my bait. It didn't listen to me. Let me show you how it's done. You're going to have to, I guess. That or I'm going to fish closer to where you're throwing. <laughs> Chad, do you want me to show you how it's done? Pretty. Mm. No, Chad, come on. <laughs> we didn't throw six inches apart. I know. <laughs> I'm about to go back and wipe my butt on his leg so he can get all that juju off of him. Oh, Lordy. See, I'm using that smaller one. Yes, oh, that's what I'm like using. using bigger one. No. Well, that spot was really good to me. Not so much Chad. But we're still trying to find him as redfish. And if we can find him as redfish, then I think we're going to try for tarpon. Just for the heck of it. I think. Uh, I don't know. Well, I'm almost certain I know where we can get him as redfish, but it's almost like cheating. <laughs> It is cheating. You haven't named that fish. <laughs> I've gotten close to it. Well, folks, thanks for joining us on another episode of Tampa Bay Fishing Channel. Hopefully you guys learned something today. That's the whole key is why we do these videos is to help teach you how to go out and catch more fish. And uh, so we're going to hopefully try to get offshore on Sunday but it all depends on how the waves are after this cold front comes through. But anyway, we caught a lot of fish, had a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. That's what it's about. And uh, if you guys need anything, jigs, braided line, fluorocarbon, cast nets, we've got it all now, pretty much. We're actually coming out uh, with a new jig. Actually, we're going to be coming out with a couple of new jigs here in the next two to three weeks but um, one of them is I we don't know what the name is gonna be yet but it's it's the original name of it is an ear ball jig because it has two looks like two ears and it's a ball so I'm not sure what we're gonna call it yet I thought about calling it the, the Mickey jig like after Mickey Mouse but I don't know I, I think something better than that but anyway thanks for watching we really appreciate the support and fish more, catch more, and we'll see you on the flip side.